Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, we're going to get started. Hello, hello. My name is Della Walker. I'm the project director for Newark 2020. Thank you for joining us for our first session of Newark 2020 Virtual Career Coaching Series. This session today launches our eight week series on how to enter into the uh, virtual workspace. If you are listening in, this is also being translated in Spanish. You can go to the bottom of the screen, click the globe, choose your language, and it will take you to the interpreter. Now, let's get started and we're gonna go over a few ground rules for the meeting. Before we begin, everyone is muted on the call. So attendees, you are in listen only mode. If you have any trouble with audio, that little orange button that's blinking on our screen is the chat button. Please uh, go into the chat button if you can't hear us, if the sound is not good, if the visual is not good, go into the chat and put it there. Throughout the day, we will be asking you a few questions. You can use the Q&A button, which is on the left hand with that blue arrow on the left side to ask any questions that may come up. Uh, after the, the speakers speak, we will queue up your questions and try to get as many as we can answer today. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on our website. So let's honor our time together, remain present throughout this session and actively participate. I just wanna share how excited I am to be with everyone today and, and talk about why it's so important for us to uh, train ourselves and our community in the virtual workspace. I was born and raised here in the city of Newark, and I understand oh too well what it looks like to watch the world go by you, to change in front of your eyes and not have access to resources or information to be a part of that growing change. Right now in our city, we have about 30% of our residents who do not have access to Wi-Fi or some level of technology tool. So today we say, we're not going to stand by and let this virtual workplace go without us. We are going to stand together, come together through trainings, through webinars, in any way possible to ensure that all of our residents have access to the same information across the board. This time uh, with COVID reminds me, and, and as we look at the changes that are happening, it reminds me of a time uh, when I was in high school. My grandfather, his name was Mr. Moses. He was an educator and an army man. He made us work for everything. So I saved my money, bought a computer, and my grandfather would sit and watch that computer every day. I would come home from school and he'd just be looking at the computer. So one day he figured out how to turn it on. The next day, he figured out how to turn on the monitor. A few weeks later, he asked us to show him a few programs. We did, we, we obliged. And then I came home and he had started typing. He was typing a letter. My grandfather loved to write letters. He was writing a letter to his cousin in Blakely, Georgia. It took him about two months to finish typing that letter on the computer because he was new to the technology. You know, he was a hand, a pen and paper kind of guy. But when he finished, he was so proud. I looked at my grandfather and said, Granddad, why didn't you just write it with pen and paper? And he said, Della, I wasn't going to let the world pass me by. That's where we are right now in this moment. We have to not let the world pass us by. So I'm asking all of the residents who are on the phone to stand with our mayor, to stand with our city officials, to stand with our corporations, to say, we're not going to let the world pass us by. We are going to be and participate in this virtual workspace. Now I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Sharuk Alphaware. Hello, everyone. My name is Sharuk. I work as a job developer slash employment coach at the Ironbound Communities Corporation's Financial Opportunity Center. 
The FOC is a career and personal finance service that centers uh, around helping low to moderate income community members focus on the financial bottom line with services ranging from employment and financial coaching and entrepreneurship services. In my role, I look for opportunities to bridge the gap between employers and job seekers in Newark's Ironbound and Newark at large. Because of stay at home orders and social distancing protocols, the remote workforce has increased and with it, new opportunities are emerging. Currently, I'm assisting community members in gaining remote employment through various social networking platforms and connecting them to remote trainings. We recently finished our online solar panel training and now with Audible, we are looking for candidates for their customer care representative training program. This time more than ever, it is important to refresh your resume, increase your online presence and your online profile. So we understand our teams have been working remotely since March. So we know the challenges faced by working from home and we understand the challenges of looking for virtual work. Today, we will have a candid conversation with the mayor, learn how corporations and public entities are working together, understand the hiring landscape of the era of COVID-19 and answer your top unemployment questions. Della? I was on mute. All right. Uh, thank you, Sharok. So I want to take a moment to uh, give everyone uh, an overview of Newark 2020 and how Newark 2020 came about. Uh, it, Newark 2020 is a local hiring initiative envisioned by our mayor. It is the brainchild of the mayor, New Jersey Institute for Social Justice, and several anchor institutions around the city of Newark who all came together and committed to ensuring that Newark residents were given equal opportunities for employment opportunities around the city. Our goal was to connect 2020 Newark residents to employment in the city of Newark by 2020. Successfully with our partnerships, we've done that. Our vision is to increase career opportunities for homegrown talent in the city of Newark. Our mission with our employers is to make sure that local hiring is embedded as a local hiring practice. It's just not certain uh, word service, it's actual actions that move that needle from Newark residents only occupying 18% of the jobs in the city of Newark to our goal is 30% over the next year and a half. Newark, uh, Newark 2020 sits at Newark Alliance Newark Alliance um, helps manage the activities of the program in line with all of our city partners and our community workforce hubs. Our workforce hubs include New Community, Ironbound Community Corporation, Urban League, and La Casa de Don Pedro, along with Newark Works. Collectively, we service residents in career coaching and job placement services. It has been my honor and pleasure to work under the CEO, Aisha Glover, over the past year. The learning experience, the connection to employers to ensure that we are making headway for Newark residents has been invaluable. At this time, I would like to introduce Aisha Glover. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I know you don't want to hear too many talking heads. Uh, our, our goal here is to get to the meat and the, and the bulk of today's uh, session. Um, thank you, Della, for, for the um, introduction, for the, for the framing. Um, and I guess I just want to add one of the unique positions that the Alliance sits in is uh, to be able to regularly engage with and hear from employers. Um, it is a, a privileged position, to be honest, to have that level of access. And what we want to do is leverage it for the benefit of Newark residents. Um, and so being able to have that direct uh, access and communication allows us to come back to our partners and be informative and be collaborative and really leverage 
um, ICC, La Casa, Urban League, NCC, um, uh, Newark Works, really leverage this ecosystem of workforce development providers around the city for your benefit. Um, so it's been really a privilege to continue to serve with and for our mayor, um, and also just to be able to work at a, at a level that we can see some real impact. Um, Della shared uh, that we were able collectively to reach our goal by the end of 2020, um, excuse me, prior to 2020. Um, and so what that means is we'll be able to even exceed it that much more this year. But under this new climate with this new lens and everything that is going on right now, what we wanted to do is retool and think about how do we leverage that position? How do we leverage these relationships to make sure that we're continuing to bring services to Newark residents, that we, we're, we're making sure that people are still plugged in and able to access information. Uh, believe it or not, we've actually still been making placements. Um, while some of our, our employer partners have hiring freezes, others are hiring. Um, and so for us to still be able to be a, a resource in that space, to still be able to leverage our partners' training programs to make sure that we're creating uh, these pipelines that are viable in the city, that's the, the most critical uh, role that, that the Alliance can play. So I just wanna thank everybody for um, uh, really investing in yourselves by joining today. Um, and of course, recognize and thank our partners and, um, and really under the, the leadership of our mayor. So with that, I'd like to uh, introduce and turn it over to our mayor, Raz Baraka. Thank you, uh, Aisha. I obviously want to thank uh, you guys, North Alliance, uh, uh, the all of the infrastructure that's surrounding North 2020. Uh, obviously, the Ironbound Community Corporation always been a great partner uh, with the city around progressive issues. Uh, our deputy mayor, that's on, uh, Rahman Mohammed, uh, as well as uh, Ryan Hagen from Institute for Social Justice, who has been at the beginning of this You've been our thought partner for a long time and has been advocating for these things to take place. So uh, it's a pleasure uh, to, to be on this and make sure that this actually continues. I want to congratulate everybody for reaching the goal, first of all, uh, which is proof that we should go beyond that, um, and, and which is what I want to do. And, and I'm glad that we are uh, using this as an opportunity to coach people even through this uh, terrible terrible situation that nobody envisioned, nobody uh, thought would, would, be, would be heaped upon us. Uh, but it is, and, it's, and it is uh, very reassuring and encouraging that we have found a space, a time to continue to uh, train people and get people ready for what I call the, uh, our Noah moment. I've been, uh, first time I said it publicly, but in my mind, you know, this has been, you know, I, I think of this as our Noah moment, our, our opportunity to start again to uh, you know, uh, make some 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 mountains flat, uh, uh, and 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 begin to uh, uh, insert some equality and, and equity in some of these places that have not existed. Uh, all of these things are the covers are being lifted off of many of many of these things and spaces. There's our opportunity to go really really hard to figure out uh, how to equalize a few things and how to be a part of what I think is going to be a changing and growing economy. Uh, and while it looks like everything is going downhill, I, I would imagine that as soon as this is over, uh, because of all the stimulus that has been given to all of these businesses and corporations, those people will rebound pretty fast and pretty quickly. Uh, it is incumbent upon us to, to be prepared uh, for that so that we aren't left uh, in the shadows. We have to do everything that we can to improve our opportunity, our access, our skills, uh, uh, become more flexible. And, and uh, to demand more uh, uh, from from folks out there to be able to 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 help us not just compete but excel. So I just want to thank everybody uh, who thought it not robbery to show up on this uh, platform today, and all of the organizers who made this real. So thank you. Look forward to the conversation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, the mayor did uh, mention Ryan Haygood and uh, the Institute of Social Justice, who has been and continues to be just a phenomenal partner and, and, and thought leader, really helping us, quite frankly, to come up with that original uh, target of, of 2020 residents. 
um, kind of pulling back the layers on the percentage of new workers who are employed within these corporations and anchor institutions in the city um, and really helps to, to push the envelope uh, in a, in a data-driven way um, to help us think about new, new policies and initiatives that can really help further advance the economic and social impact in our city. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Ryan Haygood, the CEO of the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice. Good morning, Aisha. Thanks for the introduction. It's great to be on with these partners. And uh, I just want to lift up in a few short minutes that um, that I have that, you know, the, the mayor's original vision for Newark 2020, along with the partners, was, yes, a numerical goal. And the goal was to connect by this year, 2020, Newark residents to meaningful jobs that pay a living wage. Um, and the goal was to close the unemployment gap between the state of New Jersey and the city of Newark. Uh, but even as Newark 2020 was a numerical goal that has now been achieved, the goal was really to transform workforce and employment opportunities in Newark. And so this was both a numerical goal and a systems change initiative that was in, designed to connect Newark residents to the prosperity of, of our city and the broader prosperity of our state. And so excited to have achieved the goal numerically. And we've been thinking a lot about how you then bring new policies and new legislation to the fore in a way that empowers uh, local residents. So I, I do wanna say a word about how Newark 2020 has also uh, led to policy change. We worked uh, with our partners on the Zoom call and, uh, and beyond it, to put forth what really became a, a robust package of legislative initiatives designed to really bring a broader diversity uh, through a racial justice and gender justice equity lens around apprenticeships. Uh, 10 bills were introduced, half of them passed in the last legislative session. Many of them now are uh, being, becoming effective or will become effective in in uh, the coming months. And this is a, a package of bills that looks at adult and youth apprenticeship opportunities in high growth industries that connects college students and high school students to apprenticeship programs in those areas that provide tax credits for those employer partners who are standing up apprenticeships that provides assistance for things like childcare and transportation really with an eye toward meeting the needs of the employer partners in Newark 2020 uh, and the needs of folks in our community who really wanna be connected to opportunities in companies, in employment contexts where they can learn the skills they need on the job. So we're really excited about how Newark 2020 birthed this really robust apprenticeship program with an eye toward increasing racial and gender uh, diversity in the various professions in high growth industries. And so I think this couldn't be coming uh, into effect at a more pivotal time. You all know we are in a, in a pandemic that has, to the mayor's point, exposed a lot of things. Uh, we're learning about the cracks that were pre-existing pre cracks in our foundation and those cracks are causing earthquakes in black communities in particular here in our city. I live just a few blocks from Beth Israel Hospital and Daryl Terry and his staff are doing incredible work really on the front lines where we're experiencing pro pro profound loss. Um, as Aisha mentioned, the Institute spends a lot of time looking at racial disparities and in particular, understanding what the racial disparities tell us and what they don't tell us. And so it, as it turns out, the latest numbers show that black folks in New Jersey account for more than 20% of COVID-19 related deaths, though we comprise less than 15% of the overall population. And soon we'll have access to the data on a city by city level, and we will see those racial disparities explode as we understand them um, at a city level, at a census tract level. And the reason that's important is because the next thing that the a Newark 2020 effort will give birth to is an initiative that the that Mayor Baraka has been championing here in Newark, looking at universal basic income. So folks have been advocating for a return to normal, right? You've heard this from some of your friends on Facebook and other conversations, folks saying, I just, 
I'm anxious for us to get back to the way things were, right? We need to get, just get back to, to normal. And I think for us, particularly as black people, as people of color more broadly, uh, normal for us pre the coronavirus pandemic was unacceptable. Normal for black people in New Jersey meant that we confronted some of the worst racial disparities in the country. Uh, pre COVID-19 pandemic, the median net wealth for New Jersey's white families was $309,000. Uh, this is the highest median net wealth of any one in the country, $309,000. Uh, but the median net wealth pre-coronavirus pandemic was just $5,900 for Black families. A return to that normal is not acceptable. So. We've been thinking a lot over the last year, uh, Mayor Baraka convened a group of thoughtful folks here in the state and some national partners to really begin to explore what universal basic income would look like. This idea of demolishing poverty and creating a new normal for folks who for too long have been left behind. I, do, I wanna close by uh, remembering that Dr. King, eight days before he was assassinated, he came to the city of Newark as part of his effort to build a groundswell of support for the Poor People's Campaign. Central to that effort was creating a universal basic income that would destroy poverty. That is now getting traction starting here in Newark and soon we'll be working with legislators to push them to introduce legislation creating a universal basic income in New Jersey with pilots in the city of Newark and also thinking about Patterson. It turns out that Dr. King came to Newark uh, then he went to Patterson, he left New Jersey and went to Memphis, Tennessee, and eight days later, he was assassinated there. It has long been time to stand this up in New Jersey, and we're pushing to do that. So I urge you all, as we think about the immediate needs, uh, the recent uh, data shows that about a million people have applied for unemployment benefits since March, uh, that the state of New Jersey has provided $1 billion in unemployment benefits. That is the general number. The number, the impact on our folks in particular is much, much greater. So the immediate needs focus on, yes, but the, the broader needs when the coronavirus passes and we survive this one here, what do we do to empower ourselves to live in a new normal? So I encourage you to um, urge your elected officials at the state level to begin to champion universal basic income. You'll hear more about that as the next piece of the systems change that flows from Newark 2020. Thanks, Aisha. Great, thank you, Ryan. Um, I'm, I'm usually inspired and also slightly depressed whenever you speak um, uh, about the, the, the grim realities and, and, the, and the numbers behind the facts and, and what we all know. Um, and, and, and some of those net worth differences that you talked about um, obviously expand to uh, other communities of color, uh, including Latinos. So uh, just appreciate your, um, uh, your words on this and, and your support and partnership in, in Newark 2020. Um, and of course, for universal basic income with the, which uh, the mayor and the city of Newark have been uh, championing and, and pushing for advancing a pilot here. So thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, turn it over to um, uh, my partner in this space, um, Deputy Mayor Rahman Mohammed, uh, who uh, oversees workforce development and um, has really just been a, a, a great person to, to tag team on in this effort. Rock. Yeah, thanks a lot, Aisha, and uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody for participating and allowing for me to participate on this call, especially our great leader, uh, Mayor Baraka, who is doing a phenomenal job. Uh, as it relates to what is going on in this pandemic, as far as informing residents, uh, you know, doing what he has to do to make sure this virus doesn't spread. But in addition to doing other good deeds as, you know, folks in the unemployment, uh, making sure, you know, we have uh, opportunities and jobs. As you can probably imagine, uh, you know, in this uh, situation, um, uh, our resources for Northworks and what we're doing at the web is very limited. Um, but you would probably be surprised that, um, and that's due to the fact that our officers have been shut down um, via the state um, until May 15th. And, but you would probably be surprised that 90% of the 
of my staff uh, is currently working and they've been working uh, since this um, virus um, started, since we started. Uh, we've been meeting um, via Zoom on multiple, uh, uh, multiple meetings a day, as a matter of fact, uh, as it relates to training and trying to get jobs. Uh, currently right now we're working on, and I wanna thank that staff because you know, there are a lot of people out there that's collecting checks that you know, just sitting home and, and, and you know, our staff stepped up to the plate. They're still working and, and they're doing an awesome job of trying to find ways to uh, put information out there in, uh, uh, into the atmosphere to make sure that residents are aware of the jobs that uh, are hiring and the training that's coming up. So what we've done is probably taking a three um, part approach to this. We first have set up a triage team uh, because as you can uh, probably know that most of the calls, probably 90% uh, percent of the calls that we get is due to unemployment and people trying to reach their unemployment uh, claims. But uh, we don't run unemployment. Uh, the state runs unemployment. Uh, but what we've done is because we still have relationships with the local unemployment manager, we've um, accepted the phone calls. And we've asked people to call us so that we can put you in touch with the local unemployment office so that they can assist you in trying to triage your calls and give you some assistance in contact with um, state unemployment. But we encourage individuals that even if you call us, that you still reach out to the unemployment number, uh, uh, the state unemployment office. And our number to call is 973-733-8500. Um, someone will respond to you on that call. Uh, the second approach that we took is to find out jobs that were being hired in this uh, pandemic. Uh, as you can imagine, a lot of these jobs, uh, some of them are still hiring, uh, is in transportation, healthcare, Logistics, warehouse, manufacturing. Uh, we've uh, trying. To, we're trying to set up uh, virtual positive recruitments. We've had two, uh, one on April twenty second, one on the twenty eighth with the North Board of Education. Uh, they're hiring power professionals, security, food service workers, and custodians. We have some more coming up that we're scheduling with the Board of Education. Uh, Kip School has reached out to us. They had a at they call it an happy hour, uh, which was a virtual information session. Um, via Zoom with uh, prospective um, uh, employee, employees uh, to begin the process of getting employees ready um, to be hired in uh, the kids school system. Uh, we're working alongside right now. We've had multiple people hired to Home Depot, ShopRite, HelloFresh, uh, uh, some jobs in, in warehouse and manufacturing, uh, in healthcare, uh, no question. Uh, we have a lot of jobs there too. Um, that we've been getting individuals and thanks to the Alliance because they've been connecting a lot of individuals with the Barnabas Health System um, to get hired. Uh, and so we encourage individuals to please uh, go to our web page, which is nlwdb.org. Uh, we put all our information up there. It is actually being a resource that's being utilized, not just um, by us, but other um, groups out there who find our information to be valuable. And so there is a board uh, where all our information as far as jobs, um, uh, uh, anything that's coming up as far as interviews, virtual interviews, webinars, all of that is up on our um, web board. And we're asking individuals, please go to that web board uh, and get the information and reach out. We're working right now with Unionware, which is a partner of ours in manufacturing in the city of Newark, uh, which is the perfect COVID job because it's actually selling uh, at home uh, and they paying up to $20 an hour. This is a great job here. Um, and so uh, that information also on our web board. Uh, we are also preparing for training. We know that there is going to be an influx of individuals once our office is open. And so we're getting ready for training. We have uh, worked with a group called One Huddle, which is a partner of ours for a while now. And they've set up a gaming app to prepare people to take the CASAS test, which is the new test that the state um, has set up. Um, and we're preparing people to take this CASAS test. We're actually trying to do the CASAS now. We're working with the state to try to do the CASAS online. Uh, and so we're just waiting for the okay from the state to begin the process of taking the CASAS test uh, online. Um, you know, um, Ryan, when you said that um, the uh, we, one of the goals of 2020 was the focus to try to bridge the gap between the state unemployment and no employment, I would tell you that we were successful at that. Uh, you know, when Mayor Baraka came in, he had a big emphasis on getting people to work. And so we hit the ground running. And so when we came in, there was a six point difference 
between state unemployment and North unemployment. And before this crisis, we got it down to less than two points. Uh, the states, we, you know, we reached last year unemployment about 5.4%, the states was 3.7%. Uh, and so a lot of these efforts are working and it's due to the team on this, um, this webinar now and to the leadership of the mayor who continuously push us. Uh, and sometimes he push hard, but uh, it's value because it makes us work even harder. And so once again, I wanna thank him for his leadership, but you know, that's all I have. And I'm, I encourage people, please sign up to this webinar to the rest of the series that uh, we're having for the webinar, I think is seven or eight series, Della. And we encourage individuals, please sign up for the rest of the series. Thank you, Rock, appreciate that. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn it back over to Sharuf Alpha White here. Okay, so the series features speak, uh, thank you Aisha Glover first and foremost, and thank you to all the speakers so far. Um, just to give you a highlight of what's going on, the series features speakers from employer and HR specialist partners from Rutgers University's Newark, NGIT, PSENG, Perscolas, Elite Aspirations, Gateway Chambers of Commerce, Landmark Hospitality, Impact Consulting, and Port Authority. The speakers are not only going to share their best strategies, systems, and practices to work in the virtual workplace, they're also going to discuss real life scenarios with you, the registered attendees. To give a highlight over the rest of the seven sessions, we know about Zoom, Slack, and Google Hangouts, but what about Facebook's new video conferencing? So in sessions two, three, and four being held on May 6th, 13th, and the 20th, you will learn about the various online communication and collaborative tools that will keep you productive and keep you on top of your remote delivery goals during COVID-19 and beyond. On May 27th, on session five, we're gonna tackle the world of remote work. You're gonna learn about long-term trends, key search words, job tips on how to avoid scams, and figure out the work-life balance during quarantine. On June 3rd, second, session six, excuse me, you're gonna learn some tips and tools on how to interview virtually or on the phone. You know, it's a little different from being in person. On June 10th, seven, session seven, you're going to learn to how uh, to update your career vision goals, your resume, and walk with a certified walk through with a certified coach who will provide more tips to enhance your chances of landing the job. And last but not least, we have session eight on June 17th, which is LinkedIn Power Digital Profile Building and Virtual Networking, which is going to ask the question. Are you visible? Now more than ever, it is important to build your online presence. And in this session, you're going to learn how to build an all-star profile, network, and develop your personal brand. All right, Della? Thank you so much, Sharuk. So we do have a few questions in the chat. So I want to um, pose our first question to Deputy Mayor Rahman Mohammed. Uh, Monique Thompson asked if there are any opportunities for working part-time at the moment. Well, there are, I mean, there are plenty of jobs out there uh, that have part-time work. I assume that is depending upon what industry she's looking into. Um, a lot of people, when they're asking that question, they're asking that question, some be asking it um, on rather the city is hiring. So it depends to be honest, you know, what, um, what, uh, what opportunity she's looking for. But yes, there are plenty of jobs out there that have part-time opportunities. Okay. Um, she had a part two question. And I guess I'll take part two. Uh, she wants to know, she's currently working part-time and would like additional opportunities. So yes, Monique, we do with uh, Newark 2020 specifically, our goal is helping connect residents to full-time work. So what I would encourage you to do is either to go to the website that we gave you uh, for the deputy mayor at the Workforce Development Board and register on that website, or you can go to www 
www.north2020.com and register. Once you register, a career coach will reach out to you over the next few days and help connect you to different opportunities. We uh, do resume review. We offer you interview coaching to ensure that as we connect you to employment, you are ready to go. All right, we have a second question from Herbert Glenn actually two questions from Herbert Glenn. This is for Ryan. Is there a community planning committee to help with the strategy to focus on changes needed to work on the disparity in minority economics? Mm. Yeah, so Herb, thanks for the question. Great question. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think what we, and I, I love the, the frame of the conversation is the power of community. And so, you know, our theory of change at the Institute and the, the real approach to Newark 2020 has been to build power from the ground up in our communities to organize ourselves around key issues and then from there to advocate out. So on the economic justice issue, we have a body of work built around economic justice that it tends to destroy the racial disparities we see by building systems that connect our folks opportunities. So I encourage you to, um, obviously you have my information, you can reach out to me, but our website is www.nj.org. And there you can get connected to our economic justice work, um, which part of part of that includes pushing this universal basic income idea as a new system. And the second piece is, is I don't uh, want to lose the importance of this, is urging your state legislators to think um, about the response to the coronavirus pandemic being as robust as the challenge that it poses to our community. So very often we face these significant challenges and then the remedy we seek is too modest to meet the moment. And so, you know, I've been in a number of conversations with a state elected officials who are thinking about responses that frankly don't meet the moment. Others are thinking more expansively, but I think legislators generally, even the most, um, even the most, even those who sound in change are often very status quo focused. And so Herb, you know this better, better than most certainly than me, that we have to push our elected officials to think about really tackling the challenges in a way that addresses them expansively. Universal basic income is one of those. So absolutely encourage you to, to join in this effort. It's gonna take all of us to get it through, but I do believe this is a moment to do so. Fantastic. We're going to take two more questions. The we have one question about medical, uh, the prof uh, the job opportunities for medical professionals. Um, I will take that one. So, as a part of North 2020, uh, RWJ Barnabas Health, Beth Israel Hospital, University Hospital, and Clara Mass are all employer partners, and they are actively seeking. Uh, workers in that field. They have a range of opportunities available. So once again, go to one of the websites. Uh, we were linked to the same form. So when you register, you'll get to the same team. Uh, register as an essential worker and we can connect you to different uh, opportunities within the healthcare industry. There's also a training starting on May 11th for anyone who is interested in being certified as a patient care technician. Uh, that is through New Community. There are scholarships available and it's being offered virtually. So New Community will provide you with a computer, a headset, and all of your equipment and lab equipment so that you can begin that program. Uh, the wonderful thing about that program right now is that we've been working with the hospitals so that you get into the hospital a lot sooner. So you start your clinical work about I wanna say about four months uh, earlier than you normally would just because of the needs. Uh, we wanna help meet the needs of the uh, medical industry right now. So once again, www.nork2020.com and sign up as an essential worker. I am queuing up one other question that I saw in here. We had a lot of comments, guys. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for your uh, interactiveness and participation. All right, this is for um, either Aisha or the mayor. How do you see the foreseeable future uh, for employers in terms of hiring uh, for remote workers as a new trend after COVID-19? You're, uh, you're on mute, Mr. Mayor. If you can start, Aisha, I'll follow up you. Okay. Uh, so I think everybody is pivoting right now, right? Um, I think that employers, um, uh, entrepreneurs, small businesses, everybody is really 
um, at a moment right now thinking about how they're going to kind of tweak and retool. Um, after we come out of this, I think we're going to see some permanent changes. Some things are, are, are certainly going to stick that are in this kind of intermediary mode while we're still trying to figure things out. Um, and quite frankly, employers themselves are trying to figure it out. I've, I've spoken to executives across several of our corporate and institutional partners that are now trying to, to figure out um, uh, how to remotely manage, how to interview. There are some uh, hiring freezes, but then others don't have hiring freezes, right? So I think um, uh, overall, everybody is trying to figure out what this new normal is going to look like, even in the short term, what it means for them right now. And I do think that there's going to be uh, some component that continues, some level of, of virtual work that continues beyond this. Um, some of it will just be partly based upon uh, public continued public health concerns, right? Um, and then some of that will be the reality of, uh, of what folks are learning now, that you can do this effectively remotely. I think this has accelerated a lot of practices online that probably would have normally taken us months, if not years to achieve, right? And so I think that now this is really exposing us and helping um, uh, to decide what it's going to look like more permanently. Um, and that includes for executives and within corporations as well. This is not, in, in this lens, it's not really discriminating, right? Everybody is, is trying to figure out what this new normal it looks like and what's going to ultimately stick be, once we come out of this, uh, this pandemic. So yeah, I just like to echo some of the things that uh, Aish said. On every call that I've been on, whether it's federal White House calls, state calls, or US Conference of Mayors calls, this whole idea of this uh, virtual uh, not just job and employment, but just everything from school uh, to you know, elementary school, high school, universities, everything. Uh, the, the, the problem uh, with a lot of that is that we still have this digital gap, this divide. A lot of people do not have access to where we're going. Uh, you know, and this moment has given us an opportunity to address and fix that. And it's given with the Newark Public Schools, for example, they discovered they had about 7,000 students that did not have access to the, the internet or the computer. So they had to work to find access uh, to give them computers, to give them Chromebooks and, and get the, uh, the, the cable companies to extend them Wi-Fi. Uh, that's something that probably should have happened five months ago, you know, uh, but, but at the end of the day, this, is, this moment gives us an opportunity to push in that direction. That's why I call it our Noah moment. It gives us a chance to, to use this as an opportunity to, to highlight some of the things that, that have been causing inequity and fill those spaces and those gaps up. Uh, and, and now uh, everybody sees the validity of it at this point, even though we've been, you've been, you saw it maybe 20 years ago, today people see it. And so we have to uh, do that, but we also have to train folks to be ready to be involved in this kind of virtual economy. I mean, some of the conversations I've been having with people, some of them are, are far way out in terms of like they are, talk about uh, uh, obviously doors, no touch doors, elevators, no touch elevators, restaurants that are changing uh, their, their, their method of uh, uh, who can't, are not big enough to have the social distancing inside the restaurant to do stuff almost like a mailbox order type of thing, right? So they're coming up with all of these ideas that are, that, that are gonna shoot really, really, really far. And many of our small businesses are gonna left, be left behind because they don't have the resources to put all those things together like that to be able to compete at that level. Uh, so we're gonna have to be creative again about how we uh, are able to expand or do something different than, than what we're doing. And that's why this, these seminars that they're doing on this web is incredibly, incredibly important for folks to at least to begin to, to, to think about how you involve yourself in a new kind of economy that is gonna be, I would say a third of it at this point will be virtual. You know, at least a third of the economy will be a virtual economy, and we have to figure out how to be a part of that. Thank you so much for those answers. So we are uh, just in staying with our agenda. We have about 
uh, 20 minutes left on the call. So we will have another Q&A at the end of the session. I wanna just take this time to thank uh, all of our speakers thus far. Mayor, uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to uh, engage the residents. Ryan, Rachman, Aisha, uh, we really appreciate your time today. And uh, we hope to update you with all of the uh, wonderful news out of this training and how many folks were connecting the jobs as a result of it. Thank you. All right, so at, at this time, we are now going to introduce Alicia Spencer. Alicia Spencer is an Indeed recruiter and she's here to talk to us today about what does it mean to work and uh, to work remotely and what does the virtual workspace look like? And this is just the beginner, the primer for what you're uh, going to learn uh, over the next seven weeks. Anyone who participates in the sessions uh, and completes at least four out of the eight sessions, and I think you're going to be hooked after the second, but if you complete at least four out of the eight, you will have a one-on-one -on -one power coaching session with a North 2020 career coach and high performance coach to really help you tip that needle in terms of where you want to go with your career. Uh, throughout this, uh, this session, this, uh, the series will have plenty of perks for everyone, so stay tuned every week. They, there will be a perk. All right, so Alicia, I am going to turn it over to you. You have to un uh, unmute Alicia. You ready? Uh, yes. So again, Bella, thank you so much for having me. I am excited to be a part of the NORT 2020 Virtual Career Coaching Series. This is an amazing series. And just like several other speakers have stated before me, we do encourage you to register for the entire series. What I'm gonna to talk to you about today is understanding the hiring landscape during the era of COVID-19. I wanna first start off by talking about the non-essential business and how they had to shift their business operation pretty much overnight. So I know everybody on this call knows at least one person that is working remotely or has to work from home or knows someone that works for a company who has a limited amount of employees that can actually go into the office daily since this pandemic. So what these companies had to do, they had to come up with a way to continue to operate their business as normal as possible during this time or during the pandemic. So these non-essential business concluded that a virtual workplace or working remotely would allow them for the most part to continue to operate business as usual. Now there was a catch. Some companies were unable to adopt this virtual workplace. What I noticed about the companies that were successful in adopting this work virtual workplace is they had three things in common technology. They had the technology to allow their employees to actually transition working remotely pretty much immediately. Also the product. The product that they offered, they were, uh, they had the, they were able to allow their product, they were able to allow individuals to um, continue to purchase their product or offer a product that allowed them to offer this working from home. And also leadership. So leadership plays a huge role in this. Again, just speaking for myself with Indeed, we pretty much immediately transitioned working from home. And that was based off our leadership, knowing information, understanding what exactly is going on in this world right now and made that shift immediately. And so it's the leadership that understands what's going on and they're able to come up with a strategic plan to make sure that their employees are safe and that their employees are able to transition to working virtually. So another shift that non-essential businesses unfortunately had to make was the furloughs and that's the temporary layoffs. Now, most individuals, when you think about furlough, you think strictly just the employees, oh, they have to take some time off, you know, they can't come back to work. But furloughs, they impact the company as well as the employees. So if you have an employee who has to take some time off or is forced to take some time off, it's a lot of uncertainty there. They don't know when they're supposed to come back. They're not sure about if they're going to have a job or if they can't come back. Well, on the business side, if they have to furlough someone temporary and they're uncertain about what's going on, they can potentially lose out on great employees because these employees, they still have bills. They still have things that they need to get done. And so they're eventually going to look for other employment. So the businesses, they miss out, they lose out just as much as the 
the individuals, the employees. And then what we've all seen so much, which is really unfortunate is of course layoff. Uh, due to COVID-19 layoff has increased um, significantly throughout the, the whole world during this time. And unfortunately it is going to get worse before it gets better. But eventually this will shift later on in 2020. But right now due to the pandemic, there is an increased number of layoffs. So understand the essential work and how to apply for roles. So essential work is any job, of course, that helps the government and hospital keeps going. So you have your healthcare, your power companies, manufacturing companies, food and drugs, grocery stores, postal services, banks, police officers, firefighters, or EMTs. And that's just to name just a few essential workers. There is a demand for these essential workers. And you wanna make sure that you are positioning yourself to go after these essential positions. So how you want to apply for them is you want to make sure that your resume uh, relates the skills that you have. If there's skills that you've learned or if you've taken a course or a class, you want to make sure that you have your resume aligned with that job description because there is such a demand. You are in competition with so many individuals out there looking for those same positions. So first thing you do want to make sure that your resume is aligned and with the job description. And just, of course, some different resources is City of Norwalk Emergency Response Unit, LinkedIn. One in every five individuals actually find jobs on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a huge place to actually look for jobs, uh, get jobs, and also network. Huge platform to do that. And, of course, job search sites. You know, Indeed, Monster, Career Builder, and, of course, the company's website. But I can't stress enough the important, importance of making sure your resume is aligned in the job description that you are applying for. So just some tips for remaining competitive during this unprecedented time. You wanna to try to further your education. You can get a certification or take online classes. And I hear this all the time with, I, you know, I coach, do career coaching myself. You know, it costs money. It's certainly during this time, I don't have the funds to these classes. And usually my response is cross train with a coworker. I know everyone has one friend that works in a company that works with them that works in a different department. So you always can cross train. I know it may be tough this during this time, but virtually you can cross train. Ask that friend, you know, what exactly do you do? What is your skills? What is your job? Get that information and you may be surprised that you may actually learn a different skill, learn a different job and be able to use that to further your career or even shift your career at this point in your in time. So don't, um, don't think about the only thing that you can do is get those certifications or online classes. Think about cross training with individuals that's, that's worked in your company. Learn to new technology. So of course we have the Zoom, we have the Skype, but there's G Suite, WebEx, artificial intelligence. Because of what we, where we are at today, it is imperative that you are familiar with new technology, new software, not only that you're familiar with it, but that you want to learn it. Technology, new technology, new software is not going away anytime soon. So to stay competitive, you want to make sure that you are learning these new technologies, learning this new software, to again, to make sure that you are standing out and staying competitive. And of course, learn a new language. Um, individuals that are actually bilingual can earn up to 20% more than individuals that are not bilingual. So learning a new language, again, can help you stay competitive, especially during this time. There is definitely a demand for individuals that are bilingual in essential and non-essential um, fields and network. I can't stress enough how important it is to network. Um, through LinkedIn network, of course, in this setting, network with in individuals in this setting, old coworkers, coworkers, your current co coworkers. Network is so important because a lot of individuals, they are able to secure employment based off of networking, based off of somebody who, who they know. So network is extremely important. And so this concludes the, the part, my part. So any questions? Thank you so much, Alicia. I am going to go through uh, the chat and uh, find a few questions for you. We did, we have quite a few questions coming through. So just give us a second to uh, queue them up. 
All right. You know what I'll do, Alicia? While we queue these up, uh, we also wanted to hold some space today just to talk about unemployment insurance. We know there's a lot of questions around unemployment. So why don't we do this? Uh, we will begin with some of the unemployment questions and then we'll wrap up with uh, the remaining HR questions. Okay. So I am in the chat. Um, I'm hearing that a lot of folks, uh, Alicia, are responding to uh, what you said about taking courses. Some folks are saying they're taking courses on LinkedIn. They're taking online courses with other providers. Um, that is wonderful to hear everyone. Now in the chat, does anyone have any questions specifically around unemployment insurance, how to apply for unemployment insurance? No? Okay. All right, so let's jump back into a few of the, the HR questions. Okay. All right, someone said, um, in terms of Indeed, they've been looking for different jobs on Indeed, and from time to time, they come across some that may be a scam. Is there a way to tell which uh, posters are legitimate posters and which ones are not? Yes, and we get that question um, asked all the time. So thank you so much. If you look at the bottom of the, the post, it will have an Indeed logo or it'll say Indeed. Um, certain positions will have helping people find jobs since that's our mission. So if you don't see that or if you don't see um, anything Indeed related, then that is potentially a scam. I do want to stress to individuals, we, um, I'm actually a corporate recruiter for Indeed, so I handle corporate accounts, but we actually look at each and every person's resume that comes through. So if you don't see that at the bottom, or if someone that is responding to you or about a job posting, and it does not sound legitimate, do not respond to that. We Again, we look at each individual's resume. We do respond if you are a perfect fit for the job that we are trying to place you in. All right, thank you. The next question, do you have any job tips for someone who is over 50 looking for work? That resume really is gonna be uh, what stands out. So if you've been in the workforce, a lot of companies, they do value experience over education, over certification. So if you have a great deal of experience, it's really about how you word it on your resume. So you would need to stand out in your resume. Of course, I stress, do not put any identifiable information on your resume. Uh, if you have an email address, individual's email address may sometimes have the year they were born. You wanna make sure that you're taking that out if you're doing that. But again, it's just gonna be about you standing out on your resume and incorporating the skills, the experience that you have. And if you have any education, again, highlighting that, but it really is gonna determine the wording and how you, how you word your, your resume, how you format your resume. Thank you, Alicia. All right, we do have an unemployment question. Uh, I have certified for benefits and it says it's been deposited. It's been three days, however, and I do not see uh, the funds in my bank account. So for unemployment, uh, unemployment did issue out unemployment cards. If you're not seeing the money in your bank account, check to make sure you did not receive a deposit card. If you did receive a card, check that it may be on there. After another few days, if you don't receive it, please call the unemployment office. You will have to file a claim for that. But you should see, if it's been deposited, you should see it within those first two to three days. We have another question. If you were denied unemployment based on quitting another job, can you regain it back? So Cheryl, I'm gonna try to answer this uh, based upon the information. So typically what happens if you quit a job, you are not qualified for unemployment from that particular job. However, you may have earned benefits from a previous job. So the best thing for you to do is to apply and get that denial letter. With the new COVID response, um, the, the unemployment funds associated with the COVID response, even if you're denied from a regular claim, you still may be eligible under the COVID funding. So apply, get rejected, rejected and then apply for COVID, uh, the COVID funding. Now, let me add to that, though, because, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, they do deny you at first, but... Uh, there is a big majority of them that if you put it on a pill, 
um, that, you know, you generally, you may get penalized for a couple of weeks, but they will eventually um, get you your unemployment. So, um, you know, at a, a lot of cases that I see with people quitting jobs, uh, most of the time, if it's appeal, you'll be penalized. Um, so, you know, just, just try to appeal it first. Della, you're on mute. Thank you. <laughs> All right. The, there's a question about temporary employment. And if you're be, uh, the question is, if I leave a temp job, will I be able to collect unemployment? So every situation, every situation is unique, but I think uh, Deputy Mayor's answer uh, applies to you as well. Uh, if you quit a job or if you leave a job voluntarily, uh, there is the, uh, there, there is an, a chance that you may get denied, but I would follow the same advice that he gave for the last person. Uh, I have a, another question. I applied for unemployment benefits on April 5th. My status is pending. How do you get them to approve your case? Uh, unfortunately, Dara, the unemployment office is swamped right now. I think Ryan gave us the stats that uh, over a million people here have applied for unemployment. The system is really overwhelmed and overburdened at this time, and they're working diligently to try to get everyone uh, everyone's application process. So I would just say be patient on that. Uh, I know that's not the best answer, but it's it's the one we have. We are going to send out a couple of documents after the webinar, one of them being the top 50 unemployment questions answered by the uh, commissioner of the Department of Labor directly from him on uh, some of the very important questions. I know we may have some independent contractors on the line. It does go specifically into uh, answering questions around unemployment and independent contractors. So look for uh, that email later on today. We're also gonna send out the link about apprenticeships from New Jersey Institute for Social Justice and a few other items uh, that we find that we think will be beneficial to everybody. All right, so now I am going to uh, turn, uh, turn the session back over to my co-host, Sharuk. Let's see. Sharuk, are you on mute? No, I've unmuted myself. Okay, wonderful. What do I? Huh. We are at 1210. I think we've gone through all of our questions. Um, Sharuk, is there anything you wanna add um, just about the next session or anything that you would like the uh, job seekers to know on the line before we wrap up today? Sorry, a little technical difficulties. Uh, on May 6th, it's the virtual workplace communications tools. And the goal of this specific session is that we have Zoom, like I said before, we have these various communication um, tools to our uh, use, but how do we use it to our utmost advantage? How do we not underutilize these, pro uh, these programs that are available to us and make sure that we optimize? For example, Facebook, they're now going in the market of the workplace. They're competing with organizations like Indeed in order to dominate. So what can we, how can we use Facebook in order to get the advantage in our workspace, in landing a job, in just, you know, video conferencing, et cetera. Facebook workplace, it's a new field in online communication and collaboration. So we're gonna look into these different platforms. We're gonna, like I said before, how do we optimize these platforms to our advantage for, in order for us to reach our delivery goals? Thank you, Sharuk. Uh, I just want to reiterate what Sharuk is saying is that, and, and also I think what all of our speakers have echoed is that this is a critical time in our community right now. We need to make sure that we are taking advantage of every opportunity to upskill and reskill ourselves. Industry may look different after this, but the one thing you can be guaranteed is that if you participate in trainings, if you upskill yourself, if you keep your, uh, 
keep your ear to the ground and follow the trends, you will come out of this in a much better space. So with that, I wanna thank again, all of our speakers. I wanna thank everyone for participating today and really committing to your own personal and professional growth. Uh, have a wonderful day and I will see you next Wednesday.